I could tell you all the accolades. I could tell you the things that are in front of her name, the things that are behind her name, but it really doesn't matter. As the singers were singing, we're just past the three. She's a Christian. She's a woman of God. She is a mother. She has a husband, so she is a wife. She's a grandmother, and she is a, she's an awesome host. We went to her house, and I mean, the food was delicious. She's also the pastor of Living Word Church. And I think it's befitting with the unity parade theme that we have. Think about it. Unity. Living Word. She's the CEO of True Word Ministry. Living Word. The True Word. She's a pastor. She's a friend. I introduce to some and present to others, Pastor Lou Hoffman. love a parade. I want to thank um, all of our esteemed and honored guests here today for giving me the privilege to partake in this unity parade. I'd like to thank Julie Holt and the committee members for inviting me to be able to share in this sixth year of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Unity Parade. And I want to thank each one of you who are here who participated and all the hard work that went on, it's just miraculous. And so give yourself a great big hand. <laughs> I am Mary. My husband Bill is not here with me today, but he sends his greetings to everyone. He will definitely be here at the next one. And uh, so he sends his greetings to all. But it's an honor to stand here today with you, not only to honor this great man, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but to also to participate and join forces with a group of people in the city of Quitman who have the dream of changing our community into a model for other cities to grow model behind. So let me take you just a moment and talk to you about our theme, which is happiness is. You know, I can think of this in the context of a child. When I was a child, I can remember we grew up in a family of eight. There were six of us kids, and so we didn't have everything that kids have today. And I remember about twice a year, my dad would take us to get an ice cream cone. Anybody have any memories like that? You know, we didn't get soda pop all the time. We never got soda pop. They were five cents back then. And so we never drove up. We'd, when he'd get gas, we'd drive up, and our we'd start salivating because, you know, we wanted a drink. We wanted one of those things that in that machine that you put that little nickel in. But he would load us all up in our one vehicle and we would be six in the back, mom and dad, and the, of course the baby up front. You know, the baby always gets the front. And he would take us down to the ice cream stand. And he would order seven ice creams. Mom would get one, it was her treat. Us six kids would get one, but my dad would never get an ice cream. Well, so, they would start preparing the ice creams, and he wouldn't hand one out to us at a time. He wanted us to all eat and enjoy together, so we'd be having a great time there outside the, the uh, I don't know, I don't think it was called Dairy Queen back then, but anyway, the ice cream place. And Dad would get the ice creams as they passed, too, and he was so good, he could hold two ice cream cones in each hand. And you know, on a hot summer day, what happens to ice cream, when you're standing outside an ice cream stand, the ice cream began to melt, and Dad, <laughs> Dad got his ice cream. <laughs> you say, well, what does happiness have to do with that? Well, Dad was really happy, I'm telling you. He was. But this story that happened about 50-something years ago it makes me happy every time that I remember the experience. You know, I like to think that happiness in this sense is in the remembering. And so in preparing for this opportunity to speak to you, I did some reading again historically. Dr. King's 
I listened to the video that he so inspired me and so many others. And I watched some of the pictures and went through and previewed all of the things in the past that had happened. And it did not make me happy. Some of our experiences in life, when we remember them, they are not happy ones. So we just have to be extra careful in the kind of remembering that we do or we will be robbed of our pursuit of happiness. The Bible talks a lot about this. He says, as a man or a woman or as a person thinks in their heart, and he was talking about the soul of man, the mind, the will, the emotions. He said, as you think in your heart, that is what you will become. So we want to be careful what we think on because we want to think on the right things today. Because we've already seen enough of the results of the wrong kind of thinking, right? So in reading Dr. King's messages, I began to find myself getting happy. I discovered that what he believed in and what he taught about, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all mankind was exactly the way I felt. Matter of fact, the more I began to read about this man, the happier that I began to, to be. And I began to hear myself as a preacher saying, Amen, glory to God, preach, brother, and preach he did. He preached that love was the only way to invoke change. That made me happy. He preached that all men are created equal. And that made me happy. He preached that we must never be satisfied until change comes. That made me happy. He preached that love endures all things. That made me happy. And I believe that there are those of us who are here today as we remember this great man and yes, even remember some of the very own things from our very own past. We could choose today to say, I'm happy because we have come a long way today. Now just go ahead and slap somebody next to you and slap them and say, I am happy because we have come a long way today. We've all come a long way. You know, this event has become a day of honor to Martin Luther King Jr. But it's also a unity parade. Now, unity to me means not divide. Unity to me means working together. accomplish and complete the work that Dr. King started, then we have to become one body, one people, one human race serving one Lord in His race. There's only one spirit that you're called into one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is above all and through all and in you all. Last fall, God began to deal with me about so many things, about the pains, the hurts, the injustices in our society, the prejudice between people, the lack of unity between preachers and churches and believers, people who are called by God. But let all of this stuff, hatred, prejudice, bitterness, unforgiveness, jealousy, keep us from being one body, one people, one human race. I saw these things everywhere. It began to consume me. I thought about it when I went to bed. I, I thought about it when I woke up. I thought about it when, it when I went to bed. And I began to say, God, when are you going to begin to raise up men and women who will stand up? Not who just agree that that's what we need to do. We got enough of that going on, right? But people who will stand up for what they believe in and, and say publicly how they feel. Do you know what will make everybody in this room so happy? It will make you happy when we begin to stand up not only against racism, but prejudices, divisions among the churches, the preachers, the ignorance in our society, the violence, the drugs, abortion, our little children having babies. What will make us happy in this room when we begin to educate 
instead of leaving people where they are. When we begin to feed the hungry, when we clothe those in need, when we begin to reach out together as one body into a hurting and needful society. What will make us happy? When we set the standard of God, family and country, instead of allowing evil to overtake us. But the question is here today, will you stand? Who will stand today for truth and justice? You know, I believe God has such a plan for this city and county. I believe it's not an accident that our mayor has been our mayor for a while. He's going to continue to stay there. You know why? Because he has the heart of a people of God. Yes. I want to ask you a question today. Will you stand like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Will you stand up today for justice and unity? Would you stand with me for just a moment as we conclude? I don't know if they had this planned, but I believe today that we need to give honor to where honor is. And I'd like for us to have just a moment of just silent prayer of acknowledgement for Dr. King. Could we do that? Grab arms with the person next to you. Matter of fact, not hands. I want you to go arm in arm and I want you to link across this place today. Because if ever there is a picture of unity, just cross the aisles. You know why? Because we're going to become unified in this city. We're going to see all people come together with a mutual respect for each other. Jesus loved people more than anything. I just want you to say a whisper, a prayer for that person on your right and on your left and just say, Lord, Bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, with cords that cannot be broken. Lord, help us see as you see in this city. Give us eyes of love. Give us eyes of compassion for each other. Lord, help us as we stand here arm in arm, unified together, God. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would move on every one of us, God. That we would no longer see the past as evil, but that we would see our future as good. And we seal it by the power of the Holy Spirit, the Yeruach HaKodesh, and the mighty, wonderful, majestic, awesome name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.